we're going to close out 2019 well, and I'm looking for God to do a great work in uh, 2020. Um, I'm actually, I'll tell you right now, that the verse that we're going to look at, one verse in Psalms 11, verse 3, for the first two months of the year, if the foundations are, there, are destroyed, what will the righteous do? We're going to talk about our foundations. We're going to talk about our core values. We're going to talk about why we do what we do and how we do what we do. And we're going to take the very things that this church has talked about for a long time, and we're going to redefine them again because we don't want them on a piece of paper stuck in a book somewhere. We want them lived out in our hearts. And we're going to, so we're going to take 2020, and we're going to make it come alive. Y'all good with that? Amen. Amen. Hope you have a great day. I'm going to begin with one verse. I think you know it, but I'm going to probably look at about 15 different verses today. But I think you know the main verse. If you'll stand with me, we can probably say it together. When I think of Christmas, my, our secretary called me and said, uh, what's the title for your sermon? I said, Merry Christmas, world, because that's exactly what God did for us. He, he wanted us to have the gift that was beyond life, beyond life, the gift of joy and peace, the, the gift of relationship with God that could only come because someone came to make, be our sacrifice. John 3, 16, y'all say it with me together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's pray together. Father, add your meaning to your word. You are the word, Jesus. You are the life. You are the truth. You are the way. The only way. Not a way. The only way. And Lord, there are many in this building today that are here because they love you. And Lord, we want to love you more. Father, if there ever was a good excuse on a rainy, cold morning to sleep in, this was the morning. There are so many things in our schedules and our calendar because of the holiday, but Father, I thank you for those who have come to worship you and those who are tuning in online, Lord. Just bless us all as we gather together and the name that is above all name, the name that is powerful. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved, so Jesus be Jesus this morning. Be real. Lord, uh, speak to our hearts and draw us close. And sir, we'll give you all the praise and the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Really simply for God. Where would we be if it were not for the intervention of God? Ephesians 2 talks about how bad we were in our sin. Literally, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But then when it comes to the fourth verse, it says, but God, who is rich in mercy toward us. I'm grateful that we have a God who's rich in mercy. I'm grateful that we have a God who makes a difference. But God so loved. Not the love that you and I have that changes depending on the circumstances of life or what someone said or how we feel at that moment. Aren't you grateful that there is a love that transcends all that? Aren't you grateful that there is a love that was set in place all the before the ages of time that God had a plan for us and it was the it was the love of God that constrained him compelled him that motivated him and energized him to come forward into this world for God so loved the world not just the beautiful not just the ones who were born in the palaces but the ones who were born in the worst of places I'm grateful to be an American I'm grateful that we have the things that all of us take for granted. Most of us are, are here because we, God allowed us the, the privilege to be born in this place at this time with all the things that we have. Amen for that. But I, I shared this Wednesday night. The person in America that is on poverty has more than 95% of this world today. And I'm grateful that he loves us. But I'm also grateful that he loves the others as well. What the world calls beautiful or what the world calls ugly, God sees someone that he sent his son for. If, if they have so much, if, they, if they're very gifted or not, God still loves them. The three A's that I see that 
parents are, seem to be so proud of and want all of their children to have. Academics, athletics, and the arts. I'm not against any of those three. Matter of fact, when I was in school, I, I excelled at all three. Well, in some way, I excelled at all three. My parents, though, it was never for question who was the head of our house. And I'm not talking about my dad. I'm talking about my heavenly father. And it amazes me today that the world is putting all of those things out there. And the parents who love their kids so very much would rather them have that than have God. And they set that priority. And I'm grateful that God gave us the arts. I'm grateful that he gave us minds. I'm grateful that he gave us all the giftedness of life. I'm grateful that he gave us many of the joys that life has, but I want to tell you there's something beyond that. For God so loved the world that he gave. It's not love if it doesn't matter, but God gives. He gave his very best, his only begotten son. We're never going to know how much that means until we get to heaven. But praise God, we'll know it when we get there. We're going to know the value of the gift of God. That whosoever, that's me, and by the way, that can be you. Whosoever believeth in him. It doesn't take a, hot, a lot. It just takes a heart that understands and by faith reaches out and grabs hold of something that's bigger than them. And God gives the very needful thing that meets us right where we are. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. God, Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. I understand heaven, all the joys and the pureness of the nature of God given to us, God's best for us. But I wouldn't worse on my worst enemy the absence of that, the absence of love, the absence of hope, the absence of joy, the absence of life, abundant life. Yet if you so choose not to have a relationship with God, God will grant your wish. God will give you that gift, the gift of separation from God forever. Pastor, that's hard. That's true. God's not going to twist your arm into glory. God's not going to send one there simply because sporadically he says, I love this one, but I don't love that one. I'll give this one heaven, but I won't give that one. He, he put the plan in place, and if we are wise enough, we'll find the end of ourself and, and our sins, and we'll find the beginning of God's love, and we'll accept the gift of God, and we shall have everlasting life forevermore. Just because you don't know, understand all the, the, the nuances of that does not mean that it's not true. We have a God of love. There were some that were created that actually from their first from the first moment of creation, saw the eternal God. But we've studied and we've talked about one-third of the angels wanted something else. They didn't think that was enough. Could you imagine seeing all of the blessings of perfection but wanting more because they were selfish and they lifted themselves up? That's what keeps people from God today is wanting everything to be about them. And God makes everything about you. But he doesn't make you God, and you're not a rival for him. You must bow the knee before him and let God do for you what only he could do. I was thinking about this, and I thought about in Matthew chapter number 4. At when, when Jesus came forward to begin his ministry, and, and he, he went out into the desert and was baptized by John the Baptist, and then the Bible says the Holy Spirit took Jesus out into the wilderness. And he fasted 40 days and nights. And then Satan came up to tempt. And, and in Matthew 4, 19, Satan said these words to Christ, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. And I do understand that he is the temporary title over, over this world today. Sin is there. He's called the prince of the power of the air, but it's a temporary title. Jesus will take that back. But he said, all this I'll give you. Could you imagine offering to the creator what he himself created and sustained? Not much of an offer, is it? But I said that to say this. People today still want what this world has to offer. I wonder, 
if we went around and said, if you could have anything in this world, would you give your soul in exchange? Matthew 16 says, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If you could have all the money, all the fame, if you could have everything, I wonder how many people would say, yes! I see, I see those people at the convenience stores buying those tickets because they think it, that would make them happy. That would fulfill them. If they could just hit that winning number. I hit the winning number 47 years ago when I found Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you something. He's enough for me. But to many people in this world today, he's not enough. I think about Judas who betrayed Jesus. He went to those chief priests and the Sadducees and the scribes and said these words. In Matthew 26, 15, he said, what are you willing to give me? The priest said back to him, Mark chapter 14, verse 11, and when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money so he sought how he might conveniently betray him. By the way, betrayed our Lord and Savior for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a common slave. I call that a bad deal. When God gave us so much more. He could have had so much more. But he bought into this world can make me happy. This world will be my success. Chasing the American dream in our country today. I know a lot of people who've accomplished that. You do too, don't you? Most of them are not happy. How much money is enough? How much fame is enough? How much success is enough? How many cars are enough? How many houses are enough? Those people who hit the lottery, you've heard the stories of how the money got away and they spent it and they were still broke because it wasn't enough. New Holland, let me just say to you, your pastor says Jesus is enough. Can I remind you of a few things real quickly? In the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, Matthew chapter 6, he said to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, can you give me today what I need for today? That'll be good. Father, I know you're not here to give me all my wants, but can you take care of my needs? We've got a God who does that. And we take it for granted. He knows every hair in your head. He knows every need in your heart. He knows every thing that is friction in your life. He knows the dreams that you have. And I believe he has, we studied this in Sunday school this morning. I, I believe God created us for a great adventure, but for, uh, for most of us, the common day is drudgery, boredom. We have happiness if our circumstance says we have happiness. But God, God said, pray and I'll, I will take care of your needs of your day. Uh, he said, uh, take, I want you to see this. Take your Bible and look over in Matthew 7. I want you to see this. You there, say amen. You're not there, say wait. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 9. Here we go. What man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? I mean, I think parents would seek to do the best that they could for their children, wouldn't you? Any of y'all would give your child a stone instead of bread? If you then being evil, and that means we pretty much all of us have a selfish heart. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, how much more, how much in addition will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? You think God could take care of us? I am the most blessed person I know. 
I didn't come up here today to make you laugh. I could do that. But church, I just want you to hear my heart. I just want to spend this day bragging on my Lord. I just want to tell you that my Lord's never let me down. He's never gave, given me a stone when I needed bread. He's never given me a serpent when I needed fish. He has always, always had me as the apple of his eye. Sinner Brian that I am. Matthew 11, this is one that means something to me. Jesus said, come unto me all ye that are weary, heavy laden. Is that anybody in here? Anybody wore down? Heavy laden? Feel like the weight of the world's pushing you down? If you look out there, it's seeming to me to be the, the, the feeling of, of people today. They don't have much, but they're doing all that they can, and they think that even that is not enough. How many parents are trying to buy their kids love? How many are out there choosing which to pay for? How many of them have things that are weighing them down because they're watching their children make the wrong decisions, doing the wrong things, making the wrong choices? Seems to me to be everywhere. By the way, in the richest of homes. I talked to a friend of mine this week who is dealing with children in the judicial system, children that have gotten trouble, teenagers, middle school and high school. And this is what floored me. He said 90%, what he actually does is go to the home to interview them because they open up more if he can view them in the home, right? He said over 90% are in the well-to-do houses. When he drives up, it is in the, the, the nicest houses in the neighborhood, over 90%, where the children are making all the wrong decisions. Do you think that people are weary and heavy laden in our world today? Jesus is coming to me. All you that are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you, y'all know the word? Say it again. Anybody want rest? Anybody wants to to lay that heavy weight down for just a season, just a moment in time. You know, but we, can, we get that opportunity. You know what I get every day? I get the opportunity to get up, and, and yesterday's gone, and I get to live for today. I mean, it's like, y'all remember the little gift that, that had the two little knobs on it? Etch-a-sketch, is that what it's called? And you could draw the ugliest things in the world, and then you just shake it up and start over. Or some of them, they had that little thing you pushed across. And you could just start over. Aren't you grateful that we have a God who, who his, the blood of Christ cleanses us from all of our sins and he just gives us a clean slate and it doesn't matter if we've messed up a thousand times, he, he's going to give us that next opportunity. I get to wake up every day not having to live in yesterday anymore. But I get to wake up and enjoy the, the day that God's given me today. I added that because rest means something to me. I see it in so many different ways. Have you ever been talking with someone that just, had, just seemed like they had all the worries of the world on them, and then they do this? <sighs> Praise God for a good, nice, clearing sigh. You know, Christians, we need to do that a whole lot more. Sometimes we just need to have a backdrop and a shake up the etch a sketch and start new, fresh, even in the middle of the day, and just say, Lord, Thank you, Lord, for being with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being a whisper away. Thank you, Lord, that you got this even when I don't. In Matthew 16, verse 19, he says, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Listen to me. What do you want forever? There's going to be some things down here you need to turn loose of. And they'll be loose down here. But there's some things down here you need to bind up. And you can have those things forever. But there's a warning with this. 
Some of you are walking around in anger and unforgiveness. And I promise you, if you bind it down here, it will follow you to heaven. But if you release it down here, it will be released in heaven. He basically is saying, whatever you're going to put your time and your energy and your love towards will follow you. He will give us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He'll give us that of value. And we can give that away. We have the door, the key that unlocks the door for all of the joy, all of heaven's vault. His economy is so wonderful, and it's there for us if we choose. If mankind today understood this, this place would be packed. There would not be enough room. Even those who are doing all the family parties, and God bless them, I, I amen that. I, I, I'm with them in that. But trust me, and hear me this. We would, we, could, we would always be in a building program because people would understand the need of, of the value of, of how you can have God's love expand in your life, affecting your everyday. I pray that you turn loose of some things so that you can gather hold of some other things. I really do. Matter of fact, Matthew 10 and 18, he said, freely you've given, freely, you, excuse me, freely you have received, freely you need to give. It's not just about you. New Holland, we've got a mission. There are people in need that need to hear it. There are people who need God's love. Matthew 20, verse 28 says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. I'm supposed to take up his cross every day and follow him. I wonder... Why is it that people think that being served is the most important thing? Isn't it better to give than to receive? Isn't it better to invest your life into that which blesses another? I don't know. One of the saddest things is to... Let, let, let me put it in this analogy. Y'all got Christmas trees? We do. It's pretty. We got a real tree. We get a real tree every year. We put the lights on it. My granddaughter takes all the ornaments and hangs them on the, long, the lowest branch she can find. Bottom of the tree is touching the floor. And then when she's not looking, we move them up. Amen. And that, at our house, Lynn does it right and well. It's got all the presents underneath it. It's beautiful. She goes up above and beyond, and there's a whole bunch of them in there. But just think if there was a, all the presents were gone, but there was one left. One left. Somebody just didn't take. Somebody had planned it for them, but they just didn't take it. And this is my invitation today, folks. I'm just going to make this real simple. God in heaven has so much for us. I stand before you as saying that God has done so very much for me. He has blessed me. But I tell you what, I want it all. And I, want, I don't want anyone to be left out. Why would God have a present there for someone that they just walk away from? The gift of life. The gift of, I like the word joy. I like the word peace. Peace on earth, goodwill to man. Isn't that the message? Why would anybody turn that away? You know, there's a lot of gadgets that you can get, a lot of things that, uh, by the way, some of y'all are wearing some of those ties and sweaters. Wear them now and then put them up. <laughs> Amen. As a pastor, the people used to bring me the ugliest ties in the world, and they actually expected me to wear that. That may be one of the reasons why I'm not wearing ties anymore. I don't know. I, I 
This past week, I went through and I saw all my tiles in the closet, and I got hundreds of them. And I looked at them, I just shook my head. You know, some of them, I don't even know how they make colors for those things, and they ring and they chime and they do all that. Which would you rather have, one of those ugly things that you don't really want or the best gift of life? Freely you've received, freely give. Folks, this is not a game that we do here at church. We're here because we're bound together in the love of God. We're here because God means so very much to us. We're grateful for the gift of life. We're grateful that he left heaven to come down here. He could have stayed. But you mattered. And Christians, you have received so much, give it away. Give it away. Father, I thank you for the opportunity of coming today. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be around friends that are so sweet and so good. Father, I, we, we say so quaintly, Jesus is the reason for the season, but Lord, you're, you're the reason for every season. You are the joy of my heart. You changed my life. You made me feel contentment for the first time. And Lord, you've made me feel contentment again and again. I thank you for the day. I thank you for these people that have come. Father, we're all the same. We've all got issues and troubles of life, but you make them so good. You make them better. I couldn't face them without you. I wouldn't want to try. Father, I haven't always given you the praise and the glory that you deserve. That's not on you. That's on me. I don't want to be ungrateful. Lord, when I think about the gift that someone out there needs, may I be about your business. May we be about your business. Father, may we not, may we not major on that that really doesn't matter. Lord, may we bring you our best because that's what you did for us. You brought us your very best. And Lord, if there's anyone in this building today that is still struggling with the sorrows and the hardships and the the desires for that which does not bless and does not honor you, but they still are struggling with those areas in their life. And they need freedom from those things. They need forgiveness. They need a changed life. Father, do for us what only you could do. Thank you that you're the God that can do those type things. Father, minister. Lord, even though we don't always hear an audible voice, we know when you speak to our hearts. And I pray that for those who do not know you as Savior and Lord, that you would put your finger on their heart right now and let them know that you love them and that you'll save them too if they will just allow you, if they would just believe and trust you and accept your forgiveness. And Lord, for those that are Christians, but Lord, that are walking a guilty distance, Father, draw us home. Lord, I don't know all the worries, but I know they're there. I don't know all the needs. I could guess at a few. But Lord, you know them all, and you've already said you would meet them all. So Lord, I just wanted to brag on Jesus today. The gift that keeps giving the gift of life and joy and peace. Father, may it be given to all. Lord, this invitation is yours. Do with it whatever you so speak. Holy Spirit, have your will in your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.